Hey, welcome back everybody. Patrick here. Moving on to the next question. So we got to determine the value of x such that the points 4, negative 2, and 1, negative 2, 7, and 4, 1, negative 4, and 2, and x, negative 3, and 2 lie on the same plane. So notice that we're looking for this constant here, this x value of this fourth point. So we're given four points that lie on the same plane. Now, this question could have been worded in different ways. So instead of saying lie on the same plane, they could have also said that these points are coplanar. They could have also uh, said that these points span a plane in R3. Right, so this lie on the same plane could have been worded in different ways. It would mean the same thing, so just be aware of that. So this question is pretty difficult, in my opinion. One of the more difficult questions you'll get in this unit. So let's show what is going on visually first through a diagram. So let's say we have this plane here, and these four points are going to be on the plane. So starting with this point, we got uh, four negative 2 and 1. Let's call this point A. And then we got point B. Let's say that is a negative 2, 7, and 4. And then we got point C. Let's say it's over here. That is 1, negative 4, and 2. And then we got point D. Let's say it's over here. That is x, negative 3, and 2. So we've got to solve for this x value here for this point D, where these four points are going to lie on the same plane or they are coplanar. So how do we do that? Well, if you remember when we were showing whether four points are coplanar, the first step is you want to find expressions for vectors. So what you want to do is you want to create three vectors. So the way I usually do it is I pick one starting point. So let's pick this point A. And then I just create vectors from that point A using that point A as a tail to all three vectors. And then we can create expressions for each of these vectors. So notice that vector AB is going to be this vector here. And if we want to put it in component form, what we do is we take the coordinates of B, subtract the coordinates of A. So negative 2 minus 4, negative 6. 7 minus negative 2 is like 7 plus 2, which is 9. 4 minus 1 is 3. And then let's get expressions for, or an expression for vector AC, this vector here. So taking the coordinates of the head, C, subtracting the coordinates of the tail, A, so 1 minus 4, negative 3. Negative 4 minus negative 2 is like negative 4 plus 2, which is negative 2. Then 2 minus 1, that is 1. And finally, let's find an expression for this vector, AD. So we take the coordinates of D, subtract the coordinates of A, so we would have X minus 4. So notice how here we won't have an actual number, we'll just have an expression, right? X minus 4. Negative 3 minus negative 2 is like negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. And then 2 minus 1 is uh, just 1. So notice now that we have three vectors, vector A, B, A, C, a, D, and we have these vectors in component form. Now, if you remember from previous videos, when we first started talking about coplanar points, we mentioned that if four points are coplanar, then also the vectors that are created through those points are going to be coplanar as well. So in this case, these three vectors are going to be coplanar. And if certain vectors are coplanar, let's say three vectors, as in this case, are coplanar, what does that mean? Well, that means that we could take one of the vectors and write it as a linear combination of the other two. So, for example, what we can do is we can take vector AB. We can multiply it by some constant M plus vector AC multiplied by some constant n, 
and that would give us vector AD. Now you could have switched these all around. I just uh, put vector AD at the end, just in order, but you could put it in any order you want. Basically, two vectors, a linear combination of any two of three vectors that are coplanar has to equal that other vector. So M and N are constants. So let's actually bring in these components of these vectors. So vector a, b is negative 6, 9, and 3. So we can write it like that, times a constant m plus the constant n times the vector a, c. a, c is negative 3, negative 2, and 1. And that has to equal vector a, d which is x minus 4, negative 1, and 1. So notice from this now, we can create three equations. So basically negative 6 times m, so negative 6m minus 3n is equal to x minus 4. And then we got 9m minus 2n is equal to negative 1. And then we got 3m plus n is equal to 1. All right, so we made three equations from this linear combination. And now notice that we can use these two equations to solve for m and n. And then once we have those constants m and n, we can plug it in here into the first equation and then solve for that x. And that would give us the constant that would make these four points coplanar. So using these two equations, let's actually isolate for n in, uh, in this third equation. So n would equal what? 1 minus 3m. Then we could take this expression for n and plug it in here. So we'd have uh, 9m minus 2 times 1 minus 3m equals negative 1. Right, so I just took this expression for n, plugged it in here, and now we could solve for m. So we have 9m minus 2 plus 6m equals negative 1. So 9m plus 6m, that is 15m. Bring the negative 2 over. Negative 1 plus 2 gives us 1. So m is 1 over 15. So that is one of the constants. And now notice we could plug in 1 over 15 here and solve for n. So n would equal 1 minus 3 times 1 over 15. 3 times 1 over 15, that's like 3 over 15, which is 1 over 5. And 1 minus 1 over 5 gives us 4 over 5. Right, so now we solve for n, uh, which is 1 over 15, and n, 4 over 5. And now what we can do is we could take those two constants, plug it in here, and then we could solve for that x. So I'm going to erase over here, just give myself a little bit more room. So negative 6 times the m value was 1 over 15 minus 3 times 4 over 5 has to equal x minus 4. So multiplying these out, negative 6 times 1 over 15 is negative 6 over 15. Negative 6 over 15, that would reduce to negative 2 over 5. And then uh, minus 3 times 4 over 5, that's like minus 3 over 1 times 4 over 5. So that would be minus 12 over 5 equals x minus 4. And let's just bring the 4 over. That becomes plus 4. So that would be x. And then this 4 is over 1. So to add up these fractions, we got to get a common denominator. These already have a common denominator of 5. So multiply the 1 by 5, multiply the top by 5. That would be like 20 over 5. So we got negative 2 minus 12, which is negative 14, plus 20 is positive 6.
So 6 over 5 is the answer for x, or in decimals, 1.2. And that is the final answer. That's the value of x for this point that would make these four points coplanar. So if x is 6 over 5, we'd have uh, 6 over 5 minus 4. That would be the x-coordinate of this. And then what happens if x is 6 over 5, then you can write this vector as a linear combination of these two. Now, another thing I want to point out is that you didn't have to do it necessarily in this order. Um, so. For example, let's say that we switched up these two vectors. So if we had negative 3, negative 2, and 1, and then maybe let's say we had x minus 4, negative 1, and then positive 1 over here. You could still set up equations, so we'd have negative 6m plus n bracket x minus 4 equals negative 3. 9m minus n is equal to negative 2, and then 3m plus n is equal to 1. So once you have those new equations, you can use these two here to solve for m and n. Now that m and n value is going to be different than the previous equations we had. Before we had 1 over 15, 4 over 5. When you solve with these two new equations, these values will be different. However, when you take that m and n value and plug it into here, and then you solve for x, you would still get that same answer of 6 over 5. So no matter which combination you use, when you solve for that m and n with those two equations that don't have an x in it, then you take those m and n values, plug it into the other equation that does have x, solve for x, you'll always get that answer of 6 over 5.